Welcome to Glam Chat, the official podcast of South Australia's largest lifestyle news website, Glam Adelaide. Hi guys, it's Beck from Glam Adelaide and today I have the pleasure to talk to the renowned and incredibly ta- talented Paul Vasiliff, the designer and mastermind behind Palo Sebastian. Now we've seen the gorgeous high-end couture pieces Paul creates and have many, many celebrities walking red carpets like Katy Perry and Kim Kardashian. Well, welcome. It's so great to talk to you today. Thanks so much for having me. <laughs> no worries. Well, um, you've just released... A couple of new collections recently. Um, one around March was the Wild Swans, which was <laughs> stunning. It was on the Cannes Festival as well. That's huge. Can you tell me a bit about that? Yeah, it, I mean, it was very, very exciting to have our work being shown on a red carpet again after so long. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, obviously during COVID, it's been a while since we've done anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's always very exciting and a huge honour. Uh, for us to be selected to be, uh, you know, showcasing our work on, on, on such an international stage. Mm. Yeah, the Wild Swans uh, was a collection that we did. It was our spring-summer couture collection. A lot of work involved in, in mm. putting that together. The team and I are yeah, super, super proud of it, obviously. How long does it take to design a dress? When you're talking collection, yeah. it's really a six month process wow. uh, from from conception to completion of the actual collection itself mm. um, so designing can take anywhere from uh, you know as sometimes it's as easy as a couple of minutes yeah uh, but it can it can take a couple of months even yeah. for to really refine and and um, develop the ideas further so um, you know, collections that I've done in the past, sometimes they've come to me, you know, within a couple of days and mm. the collection is there and it's done. Yeah, like how long uh, is a piece while, of string? <laughs> yeah, while, while Swans, um, I think because the story was so strong, mm. it was very easy. I think the problem with that collection for me was actually editing it back mm. and um, because it could easily have blown up into a 60 piece collection absolutely like we always see the beautiful products that you make are there any absolute disasters that happen when you're pulling together a collection i wouldn't say disasters i think because everything is so well orchestrated Mm -hmm. and thought out throughout the process we kind of eliminate any room for error Mm. uh certainly there are times that you know we we create something we look at it and go this isn't right or this doesn't look um like the sketch or the way that we intended so we just have to work at it a little bit harder but yeah i think because my design process i put so much work into it in the early stages i have a very good understanding of how the garments are going to look and we make what is in couture you make what is called a toile Mm. um so that's like a mock-up of the finished dress so we can sort of really see any fit issues, design issues um, that would come up. Yeah. The, the biggest thing I think would be um, when we start looking at embroideries and colours, just making sure that it's kind of emulating the, mm-hmm. the, the vision that we want to create. Yeah. How long does it take to make it like a singular gown with all of the embroidery and how many people are involved to make something like that? So we're a team of 16 staff mm. at Palais Sebastian. We can make everything here in Adelaide. It can be anywhere from a, a minimum of, of 100 hours, I would wow. say. And then it's, you know, how long is a piece of string from yep. there? Um, even, you know, the most simplest of dresses, a lot of people, I think, um, don't have a really good grasp on the amount of work and construction that goes into creating even simple garment in fact the simpler ones are often the hardest because they the line has to be absolutely perfect and there's a lot of underpinning and and internal construction and and hidden stitches that that go on Mm. in order to to get this perfectly hanging beautiful piece Mm. well let's let's circle back to some of the inspirations behind your your collections because you have such beautiful stories behind them like it's it just it, it makes you feel like you're wearing fairy tales and this latest one is called um 
Moonlight Serenade. Why don't you tell me a little bit about the story of the, the latest collection? So Moonlight Serenade was actually the first time that I kind of haven't really gone to an already existing story mm. and developed it. It was actually started because I was listening to the song uh, by Glenn Miller, Glenn Miller uh, Moonlight Serenade. And for whatever reason, my brain kicked into gear that day <laughs> and started imagining this girl kind of walking through a party and being in, you know, like an open air garden and, and swaying to the, the breeze of the trees and, and, and dancing under the moonlight. Mm. So it was kind of trying to then write a story that went with that vision and that, mm. and that music and then creating the character from there and, and then, you know, what she was doing, what she was thinking, what she was feeling, and then building out the collection from that point. So you made a mental so. music video. <laughs> 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 yeah. it's, it's such a creative process. And I've never really heard of designers that go to like poetry or fairy tales or, or music or songs and, and use that as like a the, the main foundation of their inspiration for a collection, which I think is just so beautiful. And um, like, and it's no wonder that so many celebrities have come and approached you and said, oh, like, how do, how do I get involved? How can I wear this? Like, h- what is the process? How do, how do people, do people approach you? Do you approach them? And do you have people coming back each time? So, I mean, we've been very, very lucky in since, since I started Paolo Sebastian, um, we've had this really strong following um, that has kind of organically grown. And I think it, it is because, as you said, the, there's the, that story behind a lot of the pieces. And to be honest, I, I kind of think it's almost like a cheat's way of, of creating the collections because it, it makes it my life easier when I'm designing embroideries and selecting colours and things because I have that story to go back to. Mm. Um, but I think that resonates with a lot of people. Absolutely. And people somehow find a connection to something in that story. Mm. And so that's why with clients, celebrities, whoever it is, I think when they discover us, they um, there's something about either the story or the, the cut of the garment or the... I guess the feeling that they get mm. uh, when they put it, that draws draws them in. So um, that's kind of what has helped us to build that following. And clients like um, Carrie Bigmore, who has been you know a really big champion for us, and mm. she's really um, she, we've been working with her for uh, like six or so years now. Yeah. Um, she wore us for the Logies, I think the first time was back in 2013, 2014. Mm. And um, we haven't stopped working together since. And it's been like such a, an incredible um, friendship that has grown. But also, you know, we've had some really amazing moments together, like when she won uh, the gold Logie mm. um, in the blue beaded dress. That kind of... Um, really helped to define our place Mm. on the red carpet, I think. Um, And it's something that I know that she really looks back on with with fond memories. And, you know, when we've had the opportunity to dress people like Juliana Ranzik for the Oscars. That's insane. Your dress was on the red carpet at the Oscars. That's huge. And, you know, (laughs) I, I... As a kid growing up, I used to watch those red carpets and now seeing my work getting presented on them is just a very surreal, wonderful... Mm, Out-of-body experience. It doesn't doesn't get old. Mm. Oh, my. Like, are there any... Is there any collaborators that you've worked with that left you a bit starstruck? Like, oh, my God, I'm working with so-and-so. I think when we worked with Kim Kardashian and Katy Perry, they were two of the biggest names that we've gotten to work with. Mm. And in answer to your question as well, sorry, before they, uh, how it ha- how it comes about is their stylists got in touch with us, mm. uh, having seen our work mm. and um, asked us to create something for them, which was obviously a huge honour. Mm. And 
yeah, it's just kind of surreal to think that you're creating something for these people that you've, I guess, looked up to and admired yeah. and seen such a glamorous figure on on these international red carpets and then yeah. you think you're you're contributing to that um that lineup of, of amazing work mm, absolutely like when you were working with kim and katie was this post or during or covid because i know during the peak of covid um you had to change how you were doing consults and how you were doing measurements like like how did you have to basically evolve the way you did measurements online? I think being in Adelaide, we are so remote from the rest of the world. We've been doing virtual consults like this, Mm -hmm. I guess, uh, for over 10 years. Mm. So it's something that we are very well experienced in and we've had a lot of practice in doing and working out all the kinks and and how, how best to run it. So, um, you know, whether it was COVID or not COVID, the process would have been the same with with those clients. And then a lot of our international clients we've had to develop that program for Mm -hmm. because not everyone is able to come down and fly to us and we're not able to fly to everyone all the time. So Mm -hmm. we have to kind of give them the same experience and that same level of service as if they were here in-house with us. Mm. Will SA always be your home or would you ever branch out and and like open something in LA to get all of those big names? Not like you really need to because uh, you're already getting them. <laughs> Adelaide will always be home. Um, I lived in Italy when I was studying mm. and got incredibly homesick during that period. And I knew more than ever at that time that Adelaide was my home and uh, I would forever be linked to Adelaide and I love it I mean it's it's one of the greatest places to live my family are here my friends are here staff team everyone is is all here um but yes I would absolutely love to also open something in Paris, something in LA, and but still be based here, still have everything made here, but, um, you know, just have those extra touch points for, for people. You know, we, uh, prior to COVID and hopefully next year, we'll be traveling back to Paris and, and have that opportunity again. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, travel is something that is, is so important for us mm-hmm. and um, vis- being able to visit our clients in in the UAE, in LA, in Paris, um, and, ev- and everywhere else. Yeah. So um, it would be great to have a base, an actual base there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, like, at least Adelaide provides all of the fantastic fashion things that you could possibly need, because I know Adel- Adelaide Fashion Week is coming up soon. Are you excited about, like, what's coming up? Like, do you think you might make an appearance? Like, Absolutely, yes. I know I'm very excited for Adelaide Fashion Week. Um, you know, the the fact that something is happening again in Adelaide and, and related to fashion is really, really excited and exciting. And I know um, my team and I are all excited to, to see the, the city rejuvenated again and, and have that that buzz mm. because it really does bring so much to the city. And, um, you know, we've been involved in Adelaide Fashion Festival, Vogue Festival, and it's always been such a wonderful experience. And so I'm just really excited to see something new happening. And, um, you know, this is just the first year mm-hmm. and I'm hoping that as it continues on it will continue to grow and gain traction and hopefully can be a you know a really big major event for Adelaide oh well I can't wait well I really do hope to see um a little bit of Paolo Sebastian at the Adelaide Fashion Week which kicks off on the 6th of October so we'll keep our eyes out for that and uh well thank you so much for your time I really appreciate the chat thank you so much for having me this has been Glam Chats For all the details mentioned in this episode and our ever-growing catalogue of podcast episodes, plus news about what's on in South Australia, hit up glamadelaide.com.au. Thanks for listening and join us next time.